It is a supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. Today, on January 24, 2019, the UN International Day of Education, we have here with us the former professor of physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Professor Walter Lewin. Born and raised in Netherlands, Professor Lewin came to MIT in 1966 as an assistant professor to inspire students with his mind-blowing lectures. Earning a doctorate in nuclear physics, Professor Lewin is a highly accomplished astrophysicist and a pioneer in X-ray astronomy in addition to his groundbreaking scientific works. Lewin taught the three physics core classes at MIT for more than 40 years until his retirement in 2009. He is the only MIT professor to be ranked among the best 300 professors of the Princeton Review. In 1984, he was awarded the NASA's Award for Exceptional Scientific Achievement. Professor Lewin co-authored with Warren Goldstein the book For the Love of Physics, which has been translated into many languages. His dedication in the field of teaching has gone to an extent, whether putting his head in the path of a wrecking ball, supercharging himself with 300,000 volts of electricity, or demonstrating why the sky is blue and why clouds are white. His lucid and engaging lectures are hugely popular and introduce thousands of students to the beauty of physics. Let's welcome Professor Walter Lewin. Knowledge broadens our horizons. Knowledge always adds. It never subtracts. Broadening our horizons can be a new way of seeing. And at MIT, I have always tried to lecture in such a way that that was a new way of seeing for my students. Of course, there are many pathways to knowledge. I believe that the best way to guide students to gain knowledge is to make them wonder about the world around them. They will then start asking questions and they will become hungry for answers. And since answers always lead to more questions, this process of broadening their horizons feeds on itself. When I was a student at the university in Delft, the Netherlands, I taught high school students in Rotterdam. After my 43 years at MIT, I retired at age 73. Most of my MIT lectures can be viewed on my YouTube channel. Today, my age is 83. But I'm still very active, teaching millions of people all over the world. Those who watch my lectures can ask me questions. And I'm also posting twice per month physics problems. Students send me their solutions, and there is also a way for me to interact with them. Now comes a key question, a key issue. What is the best way for students to broaden their horizons and to make them wonder about the world around them. Most elementary schools and high school and of course also most universities have great teachers <laughs> and some not so great teachers. That's part of life. I recall several great teachers at my high school in The Hague and at my university in Delft. And they changed my life. STEM Academy approaches learning in a different way, not the typical classroom way. Learn science by doing and feeling it. Also called activity-based learning. This is a wonderful concept 
and it has no limits. It works particularly well if there is also some guidance from teachers and parents. Believe me, I was by no means an ideal father. But I always made an effort to make my kids wonder about the world around them. I have woken them up many times in the middle of the night to see a comet or a lunar eclipse or a meteor shower. After dinner, we often played a game. We pretended that we were being launched by a rocket on our way to the moon. We would bang with our fist on the table very hard. That was the sound of the rockets. And after landing on the moon, we would walk around in our room in a way that would simulate very low gravity. We were kind of floating around like this. My kids loved it. And they always liked to do it when they had friends over for dinner. Their friends probably thought that we were crazy. I would ask my kids to design their own paper airplanes and toy race cars and even a very simple electric motor. We would then jointly test them. I once asked each of my four kids to try to suck up water all the way to the second floor using a very long plastic tube a super straw, so to speak, that was in a bucket of water on the first floor. You try it. That's by no means very easy. But after several tries, all of them developed a technique that worked for them. And of course, of course, we made rainbows in the garden by spraying water. That goes without saying. These were only some of the seeds for my kids to ask more questions and to explore the world in their own way. All this is science by doing and by seeing. On July 17, 2019, there is a partial lunar eclipse in India from roughly 1.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. This is a unique opportunity for parents to wake up their kids and to make them part of the wonders of the heavens. And that way to learn science by seeing. On December 26, that same year, there is a partial solar eclipse from roughly 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Because solar eclipses are very, very rare to see them in your own country, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to learn something truly fantastic. I've only seen it three times in my life. To learn something truly fantastic by seeing. Let your kids also think about why there are seasons on Earth. Why are summers hot and winters cold? It's not because the Earth orbit is an ellipse, which is a misconception that many have. Even students from Harvard have that misconception. Why is the sun 12 hours above and 12 hours below the horizon, almost everywhere on Earth, near March 21st, 22nd, and near September 21st, 22nd? Why are there phases of the moon? Why are the clouds white? Why is the sky blue? Why is the sky and sunset red near sunrise? Make your kids aware of the planets in the sky. 
and let them discover the unusual way in which they move relative to the stars. Why is Venus sometimes so very bright? If you can afford it, buy your kids a simple telescope and let them explore the sky on their own. And also, if possible, buy them a simple microscope. They would open a whole new world for them. And boy, will it broaden their horizons. This will literally be for them a new way of seeing. And that's what science is all about. As I mentioned already, the STEM concept has no limits. But let me name only a few more things that come to mind. You could give your kids, for, in for instance, a few magnets and let them discover their bizarre characteristics. They attract only metals, but not all metals. Let them play with ice cubes, which float in water. Let them play with straws and lemonade. Remember how I made my kids suck up water to the second floor using a super straw. Give your kids a top that they can spin. And when they tilt the top when it's spinning, it will precess like this. That's very interesting. By the way, the Earth is a precessing spinning sphere. A great present, of course, would also be a toy gyroscope. And let the students play with the top gyroscope and let them observe its bizarre behavior and study that behavior. The concept of STEM Academy is already well known in many countries. But it's new for India. This concept is a very welcome and effective addition to classical classroom teaching. I therefore recommend it very highly to parents and teachers in India. And I'd be delighted to hear from you, perhaps a year from now. Send me a message on my YouTube channel and tell me how it worked for you students, for your kids. Thank you for watching me.